The date is October 8, 2020. This is the voice of Yalak Emmett on Twitter, YouTube, Patreon. Welcome to the Anatomy of Change series. This lesson today is titled, Eyes That Know. And it may assist on your journey to finding the way back to who you are. God made sun, moon, stars, animals, trees. But when he imagined making you, he thought of himself. So the Bible says God made man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. You are already the image of God. And you will be okay if you can just know that within your being. Then you are on your way to expecting the fulfillment of your dream. Without thinking the proper thoughts, there's nothing much you can really expect. But when you get your mind together, you can bring things back into focus. Why? Because they were always there. It's just a matter of focus. Something has been robbing your focus. As for Adam and Eve, the serpent waged war on their spiritual life in order to destroy their physical life. He attacked their knowledge or their understanding and their sight or their eyes. Notice he's attacking something in the head region where you normally plan your goals, you reach forward to things, you focus on the future and what you want and so on. He was getting her to look at the fruit and to see it, what benefits it can bring, and to think about it. So the upper part, the strength part of who you are, of what makes you who you are. Your foot doesn't walk around all day and just think about how to plan your life. So it's something in the upper parts, the head regions. That's what he attacked. The goal setting and the planning part of the person. So in the garden, with this attack, they were disconnected. They could no longer feel the vibration of truth. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, and notice, I said he attacked their head region, the eyes, the mind, the brain, the thought system. What she saw, she thought to do something with it, which was to take of it and eat. But he's letting them know that God uses his head region as well to manage the whole thing, because he spoke of knowledge. So he says, for God doth know. So as long as they remained knowing the same way God remained knowing, they would be all right. Same way God was all right. But he wanted to make them unlike God. Because like I said before, he made man, male and female, he made them in his image. So he's trying to change their image by doing something with the head region. That is why you must watch who you learn from. So God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. See, a lot of you are not having your eyes Look at your goal and look at what the Most High said because you are using your heart to attach to the feelings that a teacher gives you instead of using your mind to know what you should do. You're not using your mind to size up what they say. You are using your feelings to like what they say. So you get led astray. 
But he knows that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See the deception coming in, in verse 5? But let's go on, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So now they listened to the wrong teacher, and instead of using their mind to lead them through this, they went by their feelings of the teacher, the serpent teacher, and they used their feelings to lock into him to test what he's saying when they should have been using their mind and the knowledge they had already learned from God, which says, don't eat of this. So they went by their feelings and said, wow, well, that, that would make us feel good. We like what he is saying. But spiritual things is not just about what you like. It's you have to know what should be done. That's why they were given knowledge at first. This is what you should eat and so on and don't eat that. Stay away from that. Knowledge led them through, but at this point they switched over to feelings from their charismatic teacher. Knowing and seeing will happen at the end of the war on this earth. The great war that they said is coming. So Eden serpent did not want them to see and know. Because they would be able to see through the whole thing. And see the end. Then they would know how to proceed. So not wanting them to see and know. He attacked their knowledge that would let them know. And their sight that would let them see. He attacked the head region, and a lot of the religious teachers on earth, they go after your head region, who is the serpent on earth. I told you long time ago, before I started to even see these things clear about Africa and so on in the scriptures, I told you long time ago that the serpent was people. It's not even just one person, like it's one serpent. It's a people group. It's like a serpent system. And sometimes it could just be the person you smile with, you feel good about. Because notice, they didn't seem so threatened by the serpent. It just seemed like normal, a normal day to them. Oh, he's saying we should really take this because we'll get special knowledge and become like God and so on. They weren't threatened. As if he came with some machine guns and threatening them, you better take that and eat. And they're like, no, no, I can't do it. No, he didn't come to them like that. He came like a Bible teacher, raising you up to the things of God, when they were already up living in the things of God. So God knows you will have knowledge to be like him, and you can see, so your eyes will be opened, is what he said to them. The etymology of the word see, S-E-E, -E, it says, to behold in the imagination or in a dream. So you get the picture there now that this was a spiritual lesson he is teaching. And they should have been alarmed at that. Because Adam was taught directly by God. So they got their message directly from God. In the end, the serpent lied to Eve as they now had dead knowledge, if I might say, of evil, which was knowledge of lack and knowledge of low self-esteem, by the knowledge that they were naked. So they began to see something. And if they were naked, then they were seeing truth. But even though it was truth, it was still in the context of a lie. Because deception was at work. Something was wrong with them and they had to hide. That's what they thought that something was wrong with them. Their knowledge of what was good and healthy and their knowledge of high proper self-esteem went away or died. They became blind while seeing nakedness. So blindness allowed them to have sight, to see their nakedness. So you understand from this that someone can teach you 
the Bible with expert knowledge and break down even the Hebrew. And it looks like they're giving you sight because now you didn't know this Hebrew word before and now you know it and so on. You didn't know the explanation of that verse or that doctrine and now you know it. But in the giving of knowledge and sight, while showing you something, they led you astray. So they became blind, seeing nakedness, and saw that something was wrong with them. But before that point, they thought nothing was the matter with them. Nothing was wrong with them. So they could no longer see themselves with acceptance after all this happened. But thought that they were not good enough. Now that they could see that they were naked. This is strange. You have to do the work now to get back to a place where you're in a better spot in your mind because your mind and your sight was attacked. You're seeing yourself in the wrong way, thinking of yourself in the wrong way. Because if something wasn't truly wrong with them at that point, they would have run back to God instead of hiding from him and say, hey, something's wrong. We took from that tree. It's like when a parent might say to the child, don't eat this or don't drink that bottle, it's poisonous. So they put it up high up in a high cupboard. When they're away at work, the child climbs up on a chair and climbs up onto the counter, opens that top cupboard, takes out the bottle of stuff, turns out to be poison, and they drink a little bit of it. They got poison. Now they're calling their mother fast on the phone. I, 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 I can hardly talk. I, I drank the stuff, you said. The mother rushes home, hospital, ambulance, and so on. So they're going back to the parent because they know that's where help is. And that's the parent who told them not to, so the parent must be able to deal with it. It's the parent. Why didn't they go back to God and say, hey, we took the stuff. And now we can see we're naked. We can't see right or whatever the case is. So obviously there was some kind of a breaking, something broke right there that was supposed to be right before. Something went seriously wrong for them not to go back to. Don't play with that. It's dangerous. And the child goes and plays with it and gets hurt. And it cuts them on their hand. Don't they still run back to the mother or the father in the house? Then the parent might scold them afterwards and say, well, I told you not to touch it. But the parent would still help them and dress the wound and so on. So it is normal to just go back to mommy or daddy. But these people did not go back to God. They hid. So you have to try to undo that by saying, I'm good enough to receive divine knowledge and instruction. I'm good enough to see visions of the future of my life, which I have already seen some of and will see more when the time arrives. Because the damage done by the serpent is to cause you not to think the right things, but to know wrong things, and to cause you not to see the future anymore by not seeing yourself right now where you are. He damaged your sight. But you have to begin to see yourself again with the mind's eye. By thinking of what things were like and what you were like before something went wrong and that will begin to lead you back i'm good enough to be visited by the divine ones and they want to come and visit someone like me and take interest in my life and are caught in wonder at my interest in original spiritual things i am good enough for i am fearfully and wonderfully made Let's read that from Psalm 139. That's Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. You see, the spiritually healthy person will know. But you are robbed of your original knowledge. Because the serpent gave you some other knowledge that you would get from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if you just take this fruit or take my spiritual teachings. 
but he says that my soul knoweth right well. You have to know deep inside of you that what you were before you still are. Something has simply taken your focus. Now you can only see outer layer, I am naked. You have to see beyond that, to see inside of you. Because God or the creator in the text here already knew they were naked because he made them and he did not make them close. So they were just walking around being naked. That's why when they finally came to it, they naked. He says, how do you know you're naked? He wasn't denying, no, you're not naked. Because he already knew they were. He just said, how did you know that? In other words, how come you're focusing on that? Something is getting you to focus on the outer stuff. That in a setting like that did not matter. Because everybody else would have been naked. And you still have places in the world where people don't wear clothes. So in your setting, you might just be focusing on something else in your environment that makes you feel naked. You feel naked financially, vulnerable emotionally, and you feel just not quite of yourself like other people in this or that area or educationally and so on. And you feel like you are lacking in that area. But you have to look at the inside to come to terms with who you really are. That the Creator does not look down on any of the other people around you or far from you and just start to curse them and put them down just because they feel like they don't have enough like the other person. So why are you doing that to yourself and feeling naked? The people who still live without clothes on the earth, creator doesn't look down and think something bad about them because people in the built-up world wear clothes. The people who live in concrete buildings and wooden buildings that's built on the ground, creator doesn't look at the other people who set up just a hut or who live in trees and feel that something is wrong with them or the ones who live in caves and say, why aren't you in a house, in a million dollar mansion? He doesn't look at them like that. They're just living. They're, this one is, the creator looks, this one is building his tree house, is living up in a tree. This one is living in a cave. This one is just sleeping under a tree and so on. This one makes a little hut. He just put people on the earth and that's just where they're living. But he doesn't feel like something is wrong with them because they don't have an elevator in a modern house that they own. So you're looking at other people and you're putting yourself down and you feel naked. You feel at lack. Because you have learned a knowledge that teaches you that you are deficient. That you are not what you should be. Instead of having acceptance in this life. Where you are right now is just where you are. And you should live your life. And still try to get to where you want to. But never feel. Don't dwell on the lack. Don't dwell on the, the, the stuff that disturbs you. Or it will always disturb you. Even many people who get the riches and so on, the stuff they never settled internally, it still continues to bother them even after years of being rich and famous. Because they never came to the point of acceptance internally. So they tried to cover up the nakedness inside by covering up the body on the outside with cars that they will never drive for the entire year is just sitting down in a lot somewhere and they own it and they're paying insurance and coverage on it and but they will never use it they're covering up something so you're gonna get where you need to get to if you can first do something about the inside of you i thought a long time ago that the serpent did not lie and i used to even teach that and say he didn't lie. He just talked to them. And she went ahead and took the fruit. But now I understand he did actually lie. He said they will know to be like God. 
and see, so their eyes will be opened. But they lost knowledge that we still do not have access to today, and they lost sight, and we are still blind in those areas today. Because he lied. He said they would be like God. But really, does God get kicked out of his own celestial domain? They got kicked out of theirs. Are they like God after eating the fruit? So he lied. They will not actually be like God. Genesis 1 verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So it says they were already like God. So he lied when he said, You have to do something to gain the nature of God. Then you will be like God. Eat this fruit. Then you will be like God. They were already like God. They were God-like. In their behavior, in their thought, in their diet, in their mind, in their movements, in their use of the earth. They were already like God. They were naturally godly beings. So how can you become like God if you are already that? No wonder in the New Testament, Jesus says, I and my Father are one, because he was claiming that. So it's like, I can't try any harder to do this. This is just, we're just one. So the man and the woman, they were already like God. They were in the image of God. How do you just have the image of God if you are not that? You live and move and breathe based on the image of that which is God. So that's what you are. So his deception was to get them to think something else. When you can begin to think the proper things to get your mind back, think through all this for yourself. Think about what you are being taught by everyone. And you have to decide, like God, which one of these teachings fits inside your DNA better then you will find truth on this earth. Isaiah 52, verse 15. So shall, he, so shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider, meaning they will know. So they will see and know in the future when things are corrected. But notice, it was seeing and knowing that was attacked at the start, showing that the Most High is correcting things to bring back an Edenic experience for the people. Showing again and proving further that the serpent did lie. Because they did not become like God, they became unlike God. So in order to bring them back to their normal, fundamental, regular day-to-day -day status of being God-like, with the image of God that they were created in, after the mold of God, they, were, they weren't made after the mold of man, they were made after the mold of God. But a wrapping, a casing of flesh was put around that. They were made out of the mold of that which is God. That's why when he breathed the breath into them, he had to breathe the breath of God, the ruah, the spirit. Because that's the only thing that the image can use to animate and to function. Is the spirit that the image knows. That the image is one with. When you begin to understand these things. Then you will begin to understand. What anatomy of change is about. It's moving you through the process of change. To bring your life back. And you will begin to know. The things you should know about yourself. And see in a godlike way. 
the things you should see about yourself. You will have eyes that know. So to correct the lie, at the start that they will be like God, but they really became not like God anymore. He's saying in the future in Isaiah 52, 15, he's saying they will begin to know things. They will hear things and know, reach knowledge about things that they had not been told. And they will begin also to see again. So the knowledge, the mind, the sight, the eyes that were all attacked in the Garden of Eden at the start, at the end will be corrected so the lie can be overcome, can be removed. And a lot of those lies are coming from the pastors. That's why the Bible says he will give us pastors that he chooses. So it makes you wonder if the lie is being kept up by the pastors you now have, by the religious teachers you now have. Which is why many people are struggling to move into change in their life. You get stuck in something in your life. You get stuck into some odd behavior, some stuff that you can't change about yourself because you, you can't change because you have been getting the wrong teaching that's letting you focus on the wrong thing. You're focusing up on a God that's up in the sky when you should be focusing on the God that's in you because in the image of God created he them, the image of God was inside the man, the image was inside the woman. And so he said both the male and the female, they were one so he called their names Adam. He called the plural of them Adam because both were one. And when we become one in ourselves, when we think the right thoughts, we really become one in ourselves. When we can see ourselves properly the way the image wants us to see, then we become one within ourselves and we become one with the God in ourselves. We become one with the image in ourselves. And when we think like that, each one of us, then we become one on the planet. We become one on the earth, one people. Just like the scripture says, he'll make the two sticks become one because he has always been interested in one people. This is Torah. So the verse there in Isaiah 52, 15, it ends off saying, And that which they had not heard shall they consider. Which means you're in the mind now. You are thinking something internally. It is not focusing on something that people will tell you from the outside like you're in a classroom setting. Although when you're considering, that can happen because people can gather together and consider together. But inside the mind, each person will consider for themselves. They will consider, they will get internal instead of listening to the serpent anymore. That's why, again, the scriptures say, in that day, you know, in the future when things are cleared up, anybody trying to prophesy and saying, God told me this, God told me that, they, they're going to kill them, beat them up and so on. Because you will know that God is in you because the image is in you. If the image is in you, then the word is where? Inside of you. No wonder David said that word have I hid in my heart. So they will consider it. You will sit down and you will consider it. You will lay in your bed at night and you will consider it. And then it also says that which they have not been told, they shall see. And I told you already, the see is talking about to behold or to imagine, to see, to Behold, in the imagination or in a dream. So when they are beginning to see again in the future, they will see in a dream. They will see in the spirit world. They will see things that are behind the wall, things that are concealed. They won't look this up in a book or a lexicon. Because it does not have everything in the book or in the lexicon. They will have to see in the spirit, see in a dream to get all that they have been hidden from or moved away from. They will behold in the imagination because they will start to see. 
not be taught. They will be hold in the imagination, not be instructed by a teacher. They will imagine the future and they will move into change to move into the future because they will imagine the future, the anatomy of change. They will imagine the future and will move into it and create the future by imagination, what they behold in their mind. God is saying this to the prophet Isaiah. That you, the low down, the destitute, the impoverished, the broken down, will do this like the ancients did. And so Joel said, young men see dreams and there's going to be visions, old men visions and so on. It's coming like it was in the past. That's why he made man in his own image. Male and female created them. Because the two, the oneness, the two go together. The image and the dreams. The image and the imagination. The image has to be something that you behold. To behold, to imagine, to look at the image inside of you. Only God can look at his own image. Why are you looking for God in the sky? Why are you looking for him to crack the sky? He's coming from inside of you. So that I just mentioned, we'll just read it, Joel 2.28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons, see that, the same spirit, the Ruah, he breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And you see the spirit there, the Ruah, or the Ruach, and it's from a word that links back to a different or a more stronger um, explanation like you normally hear it means wind breath and so on but it goes into h7306 that says to smell scent perceive odor accept delight so you see that word perceive and delight because that's it the image of god when you are beholding the image inside of you, beholding that which is inside of you, you will begin to perceive. It will just work. It will just happen. You don't have to be changing anything. It will just happen. And you will begin to perceive and you will delight in what you perceive. So you will look at it more and more. You will look at that image more and more. My spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Because that's how the Most High is going to communicate with us. That's why people are just going to know him. Because where does the dream and the vision come from? It's from the inside of you, that image. Because God produces the image, the, the dreams, the visions. God is doing it. He's speaking to you inside. So the word of God is coming from the inside of you. Not from up on a mountain top. It is inside. So if someone is going up on a mountain to get a word from God, it's still coming from the inside of them when they are up on the mountain of God. Isaiah 25 verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Because like it is said, the serpent said you will become like God. So you're going to have this extra special knowledge and sight and wisdom and all that kind of stuff, but it was really a lie. So in order to let them have what they were experiencing before the serpent lied, the Baba teacher lied, then he will remove the covering over the face, the head region that I mentioned at the start. This covering was spread over all nations. And you see, it hardly matters, not that it doesn't fully, but it hardly matters that governments may lie and so on. 
If the Bible teacher does not teach lies, the people would have understanding. So you have to wonder who does the average Bible teacher work for? In a trickle-down system, who does the Bible teacher work for? Bibles are printed by governments for different countries. You will see sometimes in a Bible like authorized King James Version or authorized Revised Standard Version and so on, approved or authorized for use in America and so on. So in different countries of different religious books, whether it's the Bible or some other kind of book, they are authorized by governments. If a government don't want you having certain religion and so on, they're going to block that. So the teachers in the religions, who are they teaching for? Are they teaching for the Creator? If they were, then the people would be getting truth all along. They would not be blind and there would be no veil or covering to remove from the face of the people, of the nations. So we're talking something worldwide. Obviously, the teachers in large part, not saying that there's no good teacher on earth, but in large part, the religious teachers of the earth have been working in a system of teaching God to the masses and the creator saying, I'm going to remove the veil later on. Because enough is enough. You got to look at your religious teacher and ask yourself when you look at the image inside of you, when you behold with imagination inside of you, ask, who does my teacher teach for? So let's end it with two more verses here. Isaiah 29 and verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see again the hearing and the eyes from the head region dealing with the serpent in the Garden of Eden at the start. The head region, the knowledge, the, the, the hearing and the sight has been taken away, covered over. So in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. So which words of which book have you been hearing all along in your different religions? Even in the Abrahamic religions, whether you're Christian or Hebrew Israelite, which book have you been hearing from? Have you been taught from? And have your ears been opened by all the teachings you were taught? When he's saying here that in that day, so in a future time, not now you are hearing and now you are no longer deaf. But in the future, you will stop being deaf because I will make you hear the words of the book. So are you hearing the words of the book, a certain book right now? Or are you hearing the words of other book, other books that men gave to you and the knowledge that men gave to you, which is just the knowledge of the serpent? Because the ancient world did not live like this. Shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And they told you the great light has come and now you can see Jesus saves you and you are 12 tribe this and 12 tribe that and whatever. But he's saying in the future is when you will begin to hear and in the future in the time to come is when you will begin to see out of obscurity. You will begin to see out of darkness. You have darkness right now in your doctrines. But in the future when you begin to see now by the image that is in you that you will look into, then you will see out of darkness, the darkness of your doctrines and the darkness of your knowledge. You will see out of the dark times. You will see through the darkness. You will see right through dark. That is the dark that you have now when you say, I had a good service today. I had a good meeting today. I learned about God. You did not because you still cannot see and know. But he says, in a time to come, you will see out of dark. That means in the darkness, you will begin to know and have knowledge to lead you into light. Because if you have darkness, how are you going to make your way through the darkness into light? It is to move through the darkness. Like when you're in a, the, the light, a paracut goes out 
and the light is out and you have to walk through the darkness. You are seeing in the darkness to go get the candle and the matches. But you are not seeing with the regular light from the light bulbs because it's now a power cut. So you are seeing internally with an image inside of you of what the house is like and where the cupboard drawer is with the candle and the matches. So it is in that time to come, you will see, behold with the imagination from the image that is in you, from the word that is in you, you will see truth and get yourself to light by walking through dark with the light of the image that is on the inside. You will see in dark. And so the Bible opens up saying that there was just darkness and he said, let there be light. There was just darkness and he began to create. Where did he create? From in a position of darkness. And he made the light in a dark time. You're telling me you can't get out? You're telling me we can't get out? No matter what threats there are, the vaccines and the, 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 whatever they say, the chip and the nuclear bombings, you can get out. That is darkness they are putting on you to trick you. You will get out. Does not matter what the fear, you will get out. The fear might be dark. The threats might be dark. You will get out. When you connect with the image inside of you, you will get out. When our people begin to see the possibilities and the deliverance that waits for us, that has been designed, divinely put together and orchestrated for us, we will get out. Because you will not let fear dominate your moves anymore. Because you will behold the light from the imagination. You will imagine in the dark a way to get through nuclear threats. You will imagine your way through the dark, a way to get through vaccines with chips in it to destroy your DNA like many people say. You will imagine your way out of the dark because in the image of God created he them. And you will see in the dark. Let's get to the last verse. And thank you for listening. The Lock Emma channel, this is the Anatomy of Change series. Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, Eyes That Know. Isaiah 42 and verse 18. Hear ye deaf. So again, removing the curse from the serpent in Eden who attacked the head region. They listened to the wrong thing from the serpent and became deaf. And they looked at the fruit or the commandment through the wrong lens or teachings from the serpent and became blind. So now he says, hear ye deaf. So notice they are deaf. But he is going to do like the prophet just said and make them hear through deafness. Just like he made light when it was dark because Genesis says, he said, let there be light. That means there was no light. So he imagined light when there was just dark and he made light before there was even sun and moon. Hear ye deaf. So you don't have to have everything going well in your life to move into change in your life. Because you will reach into goodness out of the bad times that you're in. So hear ye deaf. Have hearing while you are deaf. Not after the doctors fix your ears. Not after you get the right teachings. Not after you go to the strongest prophet in the land. Not after you go to that one week long convention or crusade. To learn from the, the net breaking teachers. But here when you can't afford the conference. Here when you are in lockdown and can't travel to the next meeting. Here while you are deaf and your ears are not yet fixed. Here because hearing is in the image. It is not in your ear. You hear in the image and you see in the darkness because sight is in the image inside of you, the image of God. It is not in your eyes. You will know without owning a lexicon and being able to buy that expensive Bible software with a thousand dollars. I still did not buy it till today. I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on that. I didn't buy it at first because I couldn't afford it. Now I can afford it. And I just, I said, ah, pfft. I don't need that. I got enough commentaries already. I'm good with this. These little cheap ones that I have. Only to find that I can see without it. And see clearer than any of the cheaper commentaries ever made me see. 
because the image, the light is inside. So while you are deaf, he commands you to hear. He commands hearing. And he does not yet fix the ears. He just says, hear anyway, but I'm deaf. I can't. Just hear anyway. Just hear me. Just hear. Yeah, but I can't see. Yeah, but just, just look. Just look. God is telling you to do the thing before you can do the thing. Yeah, can, you understanding these words? <laughs> Anatomy of change is telling you, you can still get there. Eyes that know. So hear ye deaf. Look ye blind. That ye may see. You see how the sight comes? So they were naked and covered up the outside because they were focusing on the wrong thing. They were focusing on the external instead of fixing what was internally gone wrong that made them break the commandments. So here he is saying, in order to fix the outside vision, to see the goodness of the Lord like David said in Psalm 27, in the land of the living, in order to see that externally happening around you and the fruit trees growing up in the desert and the wilderness taking on life and so the desert taking on, in order to see that goodness in the land of the Lord, in the land of the living, they have to see internally first. So he says, and ye blind that ye may see, that you may experience sight. You have to see first. You have to experience sight first internally to experience it externally. The world happens inside of you when you begin to use eyes that know.